July 16, 1969. Nearly a decade of innovation at breakneck speed comes together for one defining mission, Apollo 11. The dreams of millions and the work of thousands are now in the hands of three men, led by Neil Armstrong. As the crew say their farewells to ground staff at Kennedy, Houston stands by to take over mission control when the Saturn V clears the tower. You have a uh, feeling of intense relief. There's no more training, there's no more reworking these procedures. We're going to launch and we're going to go to the surface of the moon and we're going to bring that crew back. After three days of traveling almost five miles per second, the Earth is just a distant marble. The moon looms below, cold and gray. Armstrong and Aldrin enter the lunar module, separate from Collins in the command module, and approach the surface. Literally within seconds, we have communications problems, and that's the one thing we need in order to go down to the surface of the moon. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Armstrong spins the lunar module around to see if that enables them to hear the vital message they're waiting for, go for landing. We finally got a lock on through all the static, and this was crucial because this is the last time that the mission control is getting data on our orbit before we start making the maneuver powered descent. But then the lunar module starts guiding the crew to the wrong landing site. Armstrong takes manual control, seeking level ground. We didn't realize that he was about to land in a boulder field. Well, it turns out the computer is off by a little bit, a couple of a mile and a half, two miles, put us into a crater. With Armstrong flying farther than planned to avoid a calamitous landing, fuel levels start dipping dangerously low. He had to level off, fly across this boulder field, pitch up, slow down, and then start down on the final stages of descent. Well, that take a lot of gas. And so we were getting very low on fuel. Uh, we had a, 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 a minimum for an abort. So I called uh, Eagle 60 seconds, and he would have an abort call. 60 seconds. Lights on. We're still 100 feet off the ground, and uh, we got a ways to go, and I'm getting a little nervous, but I, I'm not about to interrupt Neil. He saw the light, he heard the command, he's in control. And then I called Eagle 30 seconds, and now they were close, but not on the ground, so the tension was really extreme in mission control. It was, if I, as I recall, dead silence, and everybody was glued to their monitor. Fortunately, by the time 30 seconds came, we were about 10 feet off the ground, and I'm beginning to see a shadow, uh, and uh, in a few more seconds, we're picking up the dust, and then the probe coming down from the landing gear touches the ground, and it sends a signal that says contact. So I call out contact light. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Six hours after landing, Armstrong steps into his place in history. I'm gonna step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 20 minutes later, Aldrin makes his small step. 600 million people around the world watch the first humans walk on the moon, the largest global television audience in history. <laughs>